Hello everyone. Yes, another video about Persona 3. I've been waiting for some time to be able to show you the two Igus figurines. And I want to have a really close look at them, compare them. There never was the right opportunity because I like to have a good context. But we have it now because of episode I guess, the DLC expansion that has been announced by Atlas for Persona 3 Reload. What about the two figurines? Uh, by the way, I refer to this character as I guess. Other people call her Aegis. Both are perfectly okay. Uh, I don't think there's any canon pronunciation as such. But there's a little bit of an interesting history behind the different versions of the name. The word Aegis is a well-known uh, concept in Western culture. As you're probably aware, the word comes from the Greek. And in Greek mythology, Aegis, or Aegis, is a shield worn by the goddess Pallas Athena. The shield, by the way, was usually made of goat skin, which must be pretty tough and durable, I reckon. In the modern world, we use the word Aegis in a variety of situations, but the most common one would be something like the protection, backing or support of a particular person or organisation. So Aegis is a good word that, by the way, crops up, I've noticed, in a lot of games. And it's obviously a good name for this particular character. So the DLC for the original Persona 3, when it came out in Japan, I think 2007, and uh, the West got it probably 2008, it was called The Answer, and that is a standalone epilogue. But in Japan, it was called Episode Aegis. They pronounced it like Aegis, not Aegis. So I like using Aegis because it seems to me more kind of unique. So it's special just for this one character. But whatever you want to call her, Aegis, Aegis, it's all just fine. So this figure of Aegis was released in November 2022. I didn't get it back then. I was waiting for it to come to New Zealand and it took quite a while. And by the time it got here, I'd taken my eye off the ball and I guess sold out very, very quickly and I missed her. So I had to scramble and go online. It got a bit difficult actually um, finding a copy. They did restock in New Zealand in the end, but I wasn't to know. So I ordered her online, which was fine, actually in Asia, and got her at a reasonable price. She is a pop-up parade. If you're into figures, you're probably familiar with pop-up parade. I have a lot of them because for the price, they are incredibly good value. Figure production these days seems to be going into a stratospheric expense. And Pop-Up Parade have managed to have a consistent level of quality, producing really nice figures at a price that is not going to hurt your wallet that much. She was priced at 4,800 yen when she was released. I managed to find her in 2023. I paid, I think, 43 US dollars, which wasn't too bad at all. So I was really, really thrilled to get her, especially because once Persona 3 Reload was announced, I was not sure whether I would be able to get hold of the Collector's Edition, which is the only way you could get hold of this figure. I imagine by now some people will have broken up 
a collector's edition and might be selling them uh, separately on eBay. I have no idea. I haven't even looked. But for me at the time, if I wanted to be sure, I got hold of not only the other items in the collector's edition, but this figure. Yeah, it was the only way. And as it turned out, I had a great deal of luck and got one of the very limited stock that was available in Australia and New Zealand. Now, the pop-up parade figure is a standard 170 millimeters high, so 17 centimeters. And the sculptor was Shining Wizard at Max Factory. The paintwork was done by Eriko Kaibara, and she was released by Max Factory and distributed by Good Small Company, as I mentioned, for 4,800 yen. I'll also quickly mention here that another figure of Igis has been announced, and this one is really astounding. It's called a one-to-one scale bust. It's practically life-size, so that's 39 inches. I can't even show that here. It's far too tall. And that figure will be made of poly resin, which is really the most expensive type for figures. And accordingly, she will be astronomically expensive. I'll just mention here that I am not contemplating a purchase. Now, when I received this Igus, I was very pleased with the figure. I have never had a dud from the pop-up parade. And when the details for the P3R Collector's Edition were released, I peered at the photos and I tried to figure out how good the figurine might be. Was it actually worth getting the Collector's Edition? Because this is the big, the expensive item in it. Otherwise, it's just what I would call an absolutely regular limited or collector's edition with an art book and the soundtrack and a bit of DLC. And that's the collector's edition. And yes, I have it for the PS5. I live in hope of one day having one. And as you can see, it's called the Igus edition. Looking at the pictures, I had my doubts as to the quality of the figurine. I really hesitated, honestly. The cost here in New Zealand was pretty high, more than the United States um, purchase price, which was, I believe, $200. But the one thing I knew was that if I didn't get it, I was likely to regret it forever. Such is my love for Persona 3 that I found it really difficult. So I did pre-order it, and I was one of the lucky ones who got an allocation. Now, I obviously was not the only one who had concerns prior to the release of the collector's edition. I remember seeing a comment on Reddit about this, and I will just quickly mention uh, this particular commenter had concerns about the small size of the figurine and yes I did as well but that is quite usual for the figures that come with collector's editions. A lot of the ones I've had have been on the small side. I would class amongst those the one for Tales of Arise. People like going overboard very quickly on very little evidence really. So comments like that this looks more like a prize figure that should not be worth more than $30, therefore Atlas is price gouging like mad, that the paint job looked bad etc. There's only one way to find out. Yeah, I had to get her. And you know, It's really interesting. Figures are so expensive to make these days. 
I'm not quite sure why they opted for this particularly small size because it introduced a few problems that I can notice because, you know, I really look at the detail. As far as I can work out with the stand, she is 7 inches, so that's almost 18 centimetres. And without the stand, she'd be about 6.5 inches size 16 and a half centimeters so i've pushed them together so you can see the difference in size a bit it's not just a height the collector's edition i guess all round is a little bit more petite i would say i can't see much wrong with the paint job except that they've made certain choices which differ between this i guess and the pop-up parade i guess I'll just mention one example here, and that is the tips of her fingers. They chose to go with black for this Igis. And metal or gun grey for this Igis. Now we'll look at some uh, illustrations and pictures. The question is not only which one is more authentic based on the game and the official illustrations and which one has the overall most pleasing effect from the point of view of both the shaping or sculpting as well as the colours. So this is the art book from the collector's edition. This is an illustration from the All Out Attack. And that, to me, uh, pretty clearly indicates a dark metal grey colour. And here we have the character design. Again, showing the grey colour. So, did they make a mistake? Well, my thought is that with the smaller all-round size of this figurine, it is difficult to achieve dramatic effect. The small things have to stand out a bit better. That's why I think they might have gone with that colour. And it does match the black on her legs exactly. Now, another detail would be the face plate joining under the chin for Igers. And we have a beautiful illustration for that in the book here. And I think that is where the smaller Igers clearly scores better because you can still see, you know, how the faceplate join comes up here. If you look just under the chin. Whereas I can't see it at all on the pop-up parade figure. Now, Igus, of course, also features in the manga. And I've just pulled out uh, Volume 7 here, uh, which has Igus on the cover, and a lot of scenes with Igus in the story. So here is everybody meeting Igus for the first time. And she says, It is a pleasure to meet you. I am Igus. My primary objective is to defeat shadows. I will be joining you from this day forward. The chairman in the background comments, uh, Her name is Igus. As you can see, she is a robot maiden. And Yukari says, A robot? Really? She's so lifelike. Uh, Junpei focuses in on what is always most important to Junpei. She's hot, he says, but she's a robot. So I will talk a bit more about that aspect of Igis and how it's reflected in the two figurines. I really want to sum up my feelings about the two figures. If you yourself were contemplating whether to get one or the other, 
I think they're both good in their own way. Both have the body sculpted, I think, just right. The detail is very good and just like in the game, whether it's around the shoulders or uh, the machine gun equipment for Igers, the headphones, the iconic headphones. I would say the pop-up parade figure has slightly more modern, pleasing shape, but still very reminiscent of Igers. The collector's edition Igers looks to me ever so slightly closer to the original, especially going back to the aesthetics of the time in which Persona 3 released. If you look at anime back in the first decade of the 2000s, it looks to me like her body sculpture is extremely close to the game's original especially around the bust area, which is very nicely rounded and not exaggerated in the pop-up parade figure, but looks even closer to the in-game Igus and the official illustrations for her, especially around the bust. The other thing, of course, is the posture. The pop-up parade is very much focused on the combat Igus. You can see her looking straight down the barrel of her machine gun. She's looking at an enemy. This Igus has a different stance. We don't know who or what she's looking at. It's all in the face. That's always the crucial area for me with any figure. Let's be frank. A lot of figures, even the expensive high-end ones, the faces tend to be a bit on the generic anime side. Let's put it like that. There's only so much they can do and trying to stick to what a figure looks like, either in an anime or a game. You end up with faces that aren't always as expressive as one might hope. The pop-up parade figure has a nicely sculpted face, I think. It's a slightly more modern, I guess. The nose is just a bit shorter. She's got the blue eyes and she's highly focused. So I guess pop-up parade has a nice face. It doesn't look artificial. It's got a good expression on it, as far as you can achieve that with a fairly small uh, figurine made of plastic, let's face it. But I guess from the collector's edition has a different face. I find her expression incredibly arresting. Uh, How they managed that with such a tiny sculpted face is simply breathtaking. This Igus encapsulates for me the essence of her personality, caught between robot and human, a sentient android. And if you've played the game, you will know what that conflict, that internal conflict entails. And to me, they have captured this uncertainty, this anxiety, this probing look. They've captured it perfectly. The eyes are painted a deep, dark blue, deeper than on the Popper Parade figure. It exudes an intensity because of that. No, this is not a cheap prize figure. Uh, This is worthy to be in a collector's edition, I think. 
I would not have expected that from the available promo material uh, before the release. But once again, I'd have to say everything that is in that collector's edition, the few items, because there aren't many, each one oozes quality. That's what I associate with Atlas, that taking that extra step, having that design flair, that is something special. Here is our favourite dog. <laughs> And there you have it, two times Igus. They look slightly different, but they both are unmistakably Igus or Aegis. And if you have either one of them, I think you'll be happy. As always, thank you very much for watching. Please keep well. I'm Food for Dogs. Bye-bye. <laughs>